Hello, hello everybody and welcome to the Terraform Homestead. For those of you who are new to our channel, I have been living off-grid in the Sonoran Desert doing earth bag building and teaching natural building construction over the last three and a half years. This week we're getting into the difference between earth bag building and hyper adobe building and determining which one is best for your construction style. We have done both our earth bag root cellar, which was our first build, and our current project, our hyper adobe tiny home. Stick around to the end and I'll be giving my thoughts on what is going to work best for your build. Let's get into it. Grow your garden, find your tribe. Let your hearts burn inside. Move your body toward so I want to do just a brief overview of what Hyper Adobe is and what earth bag building is. Both are an Adobe type build, which means you take the earth from the land, put them into a bag, stack them up, tamp them, and you have a structure. Adobe is one of the oldest building techniques on the planet. There's still about a third of the buildings on our planet built in a similar style. It's extremely sustainable. Uh, you're using a lot of the native materials from the land. Some of the pros for both Hyper Adobe and Earthbag Homes are they're both extremely, extremely long lasting. There are Adobe buildings built hundreds and hundreds of years ago that are still standing and still in use today, especially throughout the West and the desert and the drier climates. They both have amazing amounts of thermal mass, which what that means is they work really well in desert climates, particularly where we have very large swings in temperatures between day and night. Basically what happens is throughout the day that building heats up, soaks up a lot of heat, acts like a battery, and then at night when we'll have a 30 degree Fahrenheit swing, that heat will dissipate into the building. Both Earthbag and Hyper Adobe use majority of natural materials. So for us, we're using sand, clay, water, and that's about it. We'll get into some of the more finer details of it, but the bulk of your materials for any Hyper Adobe or Earthbag building are coming straight from your land, most likely. And the nice thing about that is eventually when they do deteriorate, it's not leaving a huge environmental impact. That building can just go back into the earth and not be something that is super, super harmful and super, super toxic like a lot of traditional building materials are. Both Earthbag and Hyper Adobe are extremely, extremely weather resistant pending you build them structurally correctly. So they're completely fireproof. Uh, you're not setting these things on fire. The actual earth bags kind of act as a shock absorber in the case of a earthquake. Uh, they're extremely earthquake resistant. They are tornado and wind resistant because you have, for example, our Hyper Adobe Tiny Home. That's about 200,000 pounds of dirt that uh, you know, it's not going anywhere. It's not, it's not moving. Um, they're also flood resistant. So, you know, obviously you don't want to build them in a flood zone, but if they did get wet, you may have some issues with your plaster getting moldy depending on what you use, but the earth bag itself will eventually dry out and be totally fine. Versus something like a stick built home or a mobile home or something along those lines where, you know, if you got flooded, you're kind of ripping out the whole thing and starting from scratch. Material costs on both of these building styles is very, very low. There is a very big labor cost with both of those, which we'll get into at the cons, but from a material standpoint, 95% of what you're building with is something that's likely on your land or something that is inexpensive to get delivered to your land. So. Building material wise, these are very affordable to make. We'll get into some more details on that, but if you're looking for a cheap, sturdy, self-sufficient home, Earthbag and Hyper Adobe are both extremely good options for that sort of build. Some of the cons, and this is true for both Hyper Adobe and for Earthbag building, is they're both extremely labor intensive. Our little Hyper Adobe home was approximately 200,000 pounds worth of dirt. 
Yeah, that's a lot of dirt to move as an individual and basically you're moving everything twice. Our root cellar earth bag build was around 1400 individual bags. Each of those bags are between 40 and 50 pounds. And again, you're kind of moving them twice because you're having to sift the dirt and then mix it and then pack it into bags. So both of these are something where you are trading off cost for time and energy. While you can build really cheap, you're gonna be putting a lot of labor into it. The other really big con of both of these builds is they're very site dependent. So out west, uh, where I'm in southern Arizona, is a ideal environment for this type of build, not only from a weather standpoint, but also from a soil composition standpoint. So we have a lot of clay in our soil. We have a lot of sand very accessible to us. If you're up in, you know, Pacific Northwest or someplace where you don't have a super high clay content or a very wet environment, earth bag build is not going to do great for you. So the beauty of the earth bag build or the hyper adobe build is that thermal mass. So you want it to be hot during the day to basically be able to warm up that building and then cool at night so that heat gets released into the home. If it's just cold all the time where you live, or if you have extremely long, harsh winters, earth bag building is probably not the best option for your environment. One thing I would give to earth bag versus hyper adobe, a win in their column is the ability to build independently and solo. So, with Hyper Adobe, it tends to work best if you do have a big crew out working on that, whether it is a big family. You can see, I'll send put a link to Tiny Shiny Home. Um, they've got a big family that works together on their Hyper Adobe builds. Or if you do like what we do, where we do work trade, work away in Wolf, that is a really great option to be able to do Hyper Adobe. Or if you just have a local community or are actually physically paying somebody to come and build your home for you, I think Hyper Adobe wins in that matter. If you are a solo builder or a couple that doesn't have a lot of help, I think Earthbag could be a better option. So the reasoning behind that is once you commit to a Hyper Adobe row, you're finishing that row pretty much. Um, it's really hard to stop and start those things uh, without creating a bunch of extra seams, which isn't ideal for the structural stability of the home. Whereas Earthbag, you can kind of work more independently, sift the dirt, fill up five bags, go stack it. Sift the dirt, fill up five bags, go stack it kind of thing. And once you get to a point where you're like, I'm just beat for the day, you can just tarp it and leave it. And you know, it doesn't have as much consequences as Hyper Adobe would. Another pro that I would say for Earth Bag versus Hyper Adobe is less sifting and less having to worry exactly about that soil composition. Because you are in an enclosed bag, that bag is providing some structure to the um, building. Whereas with Hyper Adobe, it is more of a net mesh bag. And so you don't have as much compression and just everything being held into place. With Earth Bag, you can be a little looser on your soil mixture and it's probably okay. You also have to sift a little bit less because some bigger rocks in there aren't as big of a deal. Um, whereas with Hyper Adobe, ripping those bags is pretty big deal. Um, it's not ideal. We didn't rip too many on our build, but when we did, you kind of have to stitch everything up to continue and it is a little bit of a nightmare. So from a sifting perspective and from a soil composition perspective, I think Earthbag has the win there. I think a big pro of Earthbag over Hyper Adobe is if you are looking to do a dome. You can't do a dome with Hyper Adobe. I've never seen one done. I could be wrong, but just the way the building process is, you know, you don't see Hyper Adobe domes, whereas Earthbag domes are fairly common and something that has been scientifically proven to be done and very sturdy and stable and all that. For me personally, that wasn't a deal breaker just because I do like rainwater collection and I feel like that is harder to do on a dome. Not impossible, but definitely more difficult. And, you know, you save a little bit more money on the dome, but 
personally, it's just not my aesthetic. The final win for earth bag building is the opportunity to use cement plaster. So there's three basic types of plaster that are fairly common out here, and that is earthen plaster, lime plaster, and cement plaster. I have worked with all three. My personal preference from a longevity standpoint and ease of application standpoint is cement plaster. I've had some success with lime plaster, but not a ton. I've had basically zero success with earthen plaster because uh, I learned very quickly that that is not a good material to be used outdoors. That is an indoor only kind of situation. So if I have a preference on a project, I will always go cement. You can do cement over earth bag because you are going over plastic. So there's not a lot of opportunity for that earth to breathe, which would create a moisture issue uh, between your wall and your plaster. Whereas with Hyper Adobe, you want to be able to let any moisture that comes into the wall to be able to get out of the wall. And so with Hyper Adobe, you're going to likely be using a lime plaster, whereas with Earth Bag, you could do lime, but concrete is an option there, which in my opinion is the best way to go. Let's talk about the cons of Earth Bag builds. Earth Bag, individual bag, in my opinion, is so much more difficult from a physical labor standpoint than Hyper Adobe. And the reason is you're dealing with 40 or 50 pound individual bags that you're having to lift and move and stack and lift and move and stack. Yes, show off. Once you get up to any sort of height, it gets really difficult to actually get those bags up onto a wall if you're building an above ground structure. Fortunately, we were just building below ground, so gravity kind of helped us out in that way. Earth bag also requires the use of barbed wire. Barbed wire is not a fun material to work with at all. It is pretty miserable and constantly wants to jump up and bite you, so. I burned my pinky with the string. <laughs> it's right there. Aww. Did a finger burn. There's so much I'm blood. broken. <sighs> my poor left hand. <laughs> Not having to deal with barbed wire, in my opinion, is one of the big, big wins for Hyper Adobe in general. It is something that is a lot more labor intensive because you are moving that 40 or 50 pound bag versus like a one gallon scoop for the Hyper Adobe process. Earth bag, you are dealing with more plastic. Depending on your environmental sensitivity, that may or may not be a big deal. For me personally, I think because the plastic is kind of getting locked into a building for a couple hundred years, you know, it's not an ideal situation, but it's also not the end of the world. I think from a plastic use standpoint, I have come to terms with, it's just part of our existence and let's use it responsibly. I think single use plastic is a lot bigger issue than like an earth bag building plastic, but that is something to consider. If you want something that is going to be less plastic, then Hyper Adobe is gonna be a better option. If you don't really care, you know, Earth Bag is always there too. One of the big concerns that I have about Earth Bag versus Hyper Adobe is the structural stability of it. I don't have any engineering data on this, but my gut tells me that individual sections are going to be in the long run weaker than long continuous sections. You're really reliant on the barbed wire to be doing the work in a earth bag build versus a hyper adobe build where you're fusing the clay from one level to the clay to the next level in these big long continuous bags. So I feel like there's less opportunity for things to shift and knock over and you know flood out and that kind of stuff. All right, let's get into the pros of Hyper Adobe. Like I just mentioned, I think Hyper Adobe is going to be a stronger build in the long run than an earth bag build. I think they're both extremely, extremely stable and it's kind of, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. But to me, it just makes me feel better knowing that I have these like three ton rings going around my house versus a bunch of individual 40, 50 pound bags. Again, from a stability standpoint, you know, doesn't make a huge difference. I don't know. I think if they're both engineered well, they are both totally valid. But for me, the stability of a long continuous bag over individual bags 
gives the win to Hyper Adobe. One of the biggest, biggest wins of Hyper Adobe is the efficiency in which you can build it. And so, like I said, it does work best if you have a crew of at least four or five people, somebody to be mixing, somebody to be packing the bags, you know, somebody to be tamping. You can probably get away with doing it as like a couple, but you know, the more people with either of these builds, the better. The thing that I really like about Hyper Adobe over Earth Bag is that you're only lifting like one gallon scoops at a time. You're not lifting 40 or 50 pound bags. So for me, the Hyper Adobe build process was a lot less physically strenuous and physically tough. They're both extremely, extremely physically strenuous, but you know, you're not lifting as heavy of bags as consistently with Hyper Adobe, which in my opinion gives Hyper Adobe the win as far as the build efficiency goes and just the physical strain on your body. So for us, our root cellar, which was 10 by 10, uh, took around nine months worth of bag work, and that was, you know, semi consistent. Whereas our Hyper Adobe Home took around three months for the bag work. Our Hyper Adobe Home is exponentially larger, too. Um, so I think just that efficiency of, you know, being able to make your mix, bag it, tamp it, and go, that is definitely a plus of Hyper Adobe versus Earth Bags. You know, we were able to get a full course done on our Hyper Adobe Home in about three or four hours, whereas a course on our Earthbag Home may take seven or eight hours. A lot of that kind of came from learning and getting better at the process, also switching tools and our sifting processes and things like that. But I do feel I was able to work longer on our Hyper Adobe build than I was on our Earthbag build. Some of the cons of Hyper Adobe builds. First, you kind of have to be a little bit more precise on your soil composition and what works for your area. Some places you can just dig out the dirt in the ground and put it into the bag and you'll be great. Where we are, we do have to add sand supplementally. We could get that from our wash, but we did that for a while and it just didn't make sense from a labor and time perspective, mostly because I have an old truck and was putting a lot of wear and tear on the truck. So now we have sand delivered. The other thing is adding cement to a mix. Cement is pretty environmentally destructive produces a lot of CO2, greenhouse gases, things like that. Once it's in a building, it's fine, but that process of creating it still kind of rubs me the wrong way as far as like a fully, fully natural build process. But some of the other things that happen with Hyper Adobe, the wins for Hyper Adobe, make it worth it for me to do that. But just be aware, your soil composition really does matter, and you also have to sift down to a finer particle for Hyper Adobe. So with Earthbag, you can kind of get away with some bigger chunks in there. With Hyper Adobe, you're going to want to sift that, you know, to a quarter inch screen or something along those lines, because if you do start getting rips in those bags, there's just not as much to hold things together and it can cause problems really quickly. What building style do I think would work for your build? I think both are totally valid building techniques. Both have their pros and cons and depending on where you are, you know, one may work better than the other. For me personally, Hyper Adobe has become my go-to building. We don't do earth bags anymore. I had a bunch left and gave them away because honestly, it came down to the physical labor and damage on my body of working with earth bags. Not only the lifting of 40 or 50 pounds, but also dealing with the barbed wire and just not feeling as confident with the structural stability of individual bags versus large rolls. That being said, I think earth bag could be a really good option for an individual who's starting their homestead or even a couple who is doing their homestead because you do have that flexibility to kind of stop and start, do five bags a day kind of thing, and eventually you'll get through your house. 
whereas the hyper adobe process between the mixing and the packing and tamping and to try and keep those continuous rows going as much as possible you're kind of committing to like a full build day every time you go out there the other thing i think earth bag is better for is depending on your soil composition if you have a less desirable soil composition for natural building earth bag may be a better way to go uh, because you're not as dependent on the clay locking everything together and providing that structural strength you have a little bit more flexibility with those bags so i think depending on what your soil type is specifically that may help dictate one way or the other which way you go the last piece where i think earth bag would be a good option for somebody is if you are hyper 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 cost conscious and i'm not talking about like the difference between like a thousand and two thousand i'm talking about the difference between like a few hundred dollars here or there if you're willing to put in the labor to save a couple hundred dollars earth bag i do feel is going to be cheaper in the long run especially if you are getting sand delivered like we do if you are buying cement i do feel like earth bag is going to be cheaper structure wise we spent probably about two thousand dollars to totally totally finish our root cellar as it sits right now we're at probably around twelve to thirteen thousand dollars for our hyper adobe tiny home it's hard to compare those two because one is a very basic root cellar without any finish out it's also you know just 10 by 10 whereas our hyper adobe tiny home is 280 square feet has a loft has a 30 by 24 roof you know windows things like that electrical there are a lot more costs that go into a home versus a root cellar but you know overall i think we were able to get our bag work done on the root cellar for like twelve hundred dollars including the excavation whereas we're probably at like four to five thousand dollars for the hyper adobe home the opposite of that where i think hyper adobe wins out and the reasons that hyper adobe is pretty well exclusively my building technique nowadays is the efficiency of it it just it is so much faster our earth bag build took us around nine months to do whereas our hyper adobe took us around three and our hyper adobe is a significantly larger building hyper adobe is going to go a lot a lot faster than earth bag building i think hyper adobe homes work really well for people who don't want to do a dome that want a little bit more efficiency in their build. I think Hyper Adobe is a really good option if your budget is a little bit looser and more open. And again, I'm not talking about tens of thousands of dollars difference between the two types of builds. You're probably looking at a couple grand difference. So again, for me and why I like Hyper Adobe over Earth Bag Home is I'm willing to spend a couple extra grand on a building and not tear myself up, uh, not break my back quite as much. You're still going to, you know, put out some effort, but just that ease of build for me makes Hyper Adobe a more palatable option than the Earth Bag build. I hope this information was helpful and inspiring and gave you some thoughts on which way to go with your particular natural build earth and home. If you have not seen our earth bag root cellar build yet or our hyper adobe home, I've got links to both of those right here for you now. Go check them out and determine which one works best for you. Thank you guys for watching and go build something cool.